everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's video, we're gonna be going over the all new 2020 Toyota Highlander in the limited package. I had a ton of you request for me to do a limited or a platinum, and I still plan on doing a platinum once the Toyota store gets one, but anyways, here she is. So as always, we're gonna do a quick walk around on the Highlander. Then we're gonna take it out and see how it drives. A huge shout out and thank you to the Larry H. Miller Toyota here in Murray, Utah for providing us with the Highlander. Check out their inventory in the link below. Let's get into the video. Under the hood here, we have a naturally aspirated 3.5 liter V6. It goes through an eight speed automatic transmission. Fuel economy is 20 around town and 27 on the highway with power outputs being 295 horsepower and 263 foot pounds of torque. Let's go over things on the front end of the Highlander Limited. Now, first and foremost, you guys will kind of notice the little bulges there on the hood and then the full LED lights. These look a little bit different than the regular Highlanders. So here is a regular 2020 Highlander. You can see the headlight cluster right there versus what is on the Limited. So there's kind of like these little lines. Definitely a cool look. You've got the Toyota logo there on the center, which obviously doubles as a sensor. And then the front grille looks pretty cool. By the way, this color is called Opulent Amber. And I don't know if I can capture it on camera. It's a very interesting color. So it looks like it's black from a distance. But then when you get up really close, it's kind of like this purplish with gold flake in it. That's the best way for me to describe this color. It's very dark purple, almost black, with kind of like gold flake in it. Let's go over the tire and rim setup here. So we've got two 35 millimeter tires on 20 inch rims with the Limited. And I definitely like the design of it. Pretty flashy there with the bright chrome, but I mean, it looks good on this particular Highlander. Now you've got these same little kind of like plastic fenders that'll extend right down there. And it kind of does like a little mud flap design there at the bottom and it's in the same in the rear and then finally here is a full side view on the limited here is our key fob for the highlander so you've got the highlander logo there on the back of the little toyota logo and then it's got the lock unlock and then the trunk release here on the back now if you press the lock button a couple of times and then hold it down it takes a moment but it will do the remote start you notice that it'll flash there with the little lights and then you can see the exhaust tip hanging out the uh, bottom there Kind of cold outside so there you go but hold that down again and then that will shut it right off now we will do the tailgate release hold that down takes a moment and then the rear hatch will pop open and it does that toyota beep thing well looking at the rear here the third row is folded down so you can see how much storage space is back here on the highlander now under this little mat you can pull this up for some extra storage space other than that though, when you do have the seats folded up, which I'll pull this one up so you guys can actually see, the storage space back here is actually pretty decent for a third row SUV. Most of them will have like no storage space, whereas this one has at least an okay amount. And then it is manual to throw it down. You just have to pull that little latch and then push it down. And yeah, that's everything for the rear. And then our last little thing is you just press this button to lower down the hatch. Now let's finish things up in the rear of the Highlander. So we've got these new little lights here and I love how sharp the new LEDs look. It's just a really cool look compared to the previous generation. Got all the logos in the back, that's pretty normal. And towing capacity, 5,000 pounds on the Highlander, which is actually really good. And that's all. Now opening up the rear here, we can look at the door panel in the back and it's actually really nice and limited. So you got all this nice leather here. We do get some sunshades for the rear passengers. And then there's some cup holders down below. Now these are the chairs. It is captain chairs in this particular one. And I really like the design of the seats. The feel of them is really nice as well. And then they do get their own little kind of like climate control station since there's a climate for the rear. A couple charging stations and then some cup holders. And well, as always, we're gonna pop inside and sitting here in the second row, it's very spacious. There's a good amount of leg room. I've got the seat about where I would sit and I'm five foot 11. Now there's some storage down here and I'm glad they put the backs of the seats to soft. Some manufacturers just do plastic back here. So it's nice they made it soft touch. And then in terms of headroom for the second row at least, it's a good amount. So yeah, we're gonna head to the third row. All you have to do is just kind of press that and then you can move the seat forward. It is on tracks. And this is kind of like your little space to get in the third row. So. Well, I'm sure you guys will enjoy me kind of trying to scrunch up back here. Okay, well, now we're in the third row. And I dare not pull that seat back because I have legs. So this is where the floor mat is. This is how I'd have to be sitting if 
I had the seat where it's supposed to be instead of having my legs out here. So yeah, legroom's cramped. In terms of headroom, the seat's actually really forward. So I'm imagining I gotta just pull that little latch right there. Oh, it doesn't go back. So the seats are like really like uncomfortably upright. So I reserve this for kids and it's, it's okay back here. Got some cup holders. Yeah, it's good. You have Kia Sentry up front here. So one touch to lock it and then unlock it. You just put your hand on the back of the door handle. By the way, that mirror does have blind spot monitoring. Now this door panel here in the front looks identical to the one in the rear. The only difference is you've got memory seats here. You've got all of your controls for the mirrors and then your window controls right here. Now here's the seat in the front itself. You can see the seat actually looks really nice here in the limited power adjustments are on the side of the seat. In terms of the feel, the leather on it's pretty soft and plush. The bolstering is nice. Now here's your pedal layout just down below at the bottom. Got your little hood release and your gas release and then you've got your control for the heated steering wheel and the tailgate release. And the steering wheel, by the way, is manually adjustable, but let's pop in. Now to start off this Highlander Limited, just gotta do that. Get a little graphic that says Highlander and the gauges will do a sweep and then got the Toyota logo there. It does the same thing that Lexus does. Lexus will do like the vehicle model there and then it always say Lexus the middle, Toyota there and the vehicle middle. It's like they're the same manufacturer. All joking aside, here is the steering wheel and on the sides right here, we've got controls for the cruise control and then you've got your controls for like the lane departure assistance, the collision assistance. These are for the radio. You've got the stuff for the radio there and voice commands. And this is for the little center screen. Now in terms of the steering wheel itself, the leather on it's really smooth. Stitching on it is nice. And then you've got this nice black trim that goes throughout on the steering wheel. I kind of wish this was a hole just because it's just weird that it's not. But anyways, got the stock for the lights and then windshield wipers on the other side. Here is our updated little gauge cluster area. And in terms of functionality on it, it's just like any other vehicle. It's relatively easy to use. There's a ton of different menus that just give you different information on the vehicle. And this one's pretty cool that it shows you kind of like all your safety assistance. You can see how the little Highlander is changing. I think that's cool. They put the money into the little graphic designs there. But if you notice, kind of looks like a, just a regular car there for the graphic for that but yeah pretty normal setup there in the middle here is our center display and if we pop it into reverse backup camera will pop up and i like that they have the trajectory lines actually move when you turn the steering wheel it's a nice little touch and it is a touch screen so you can kind of change the view on it but anyways other than that they do analog buttons on the side of the screen which is definitely a nice little touch in terms of the touch response i mean you guys can see as i'm pressing the buttons how everything responds on the highlander Nope, we don't want to do that. But anyways, yeah, it's good. It's cool. You can do like the little phone projection on the screen itself. And other than that, it's just like all of Toyota's other infotainment systems. Now this little area here I think is pretty cool. So yeah, you got your controls for your heated and ventilated seats and then the dual zone climate for the front. But I just like the design of it, just how it all flows together and the feel of all the controls definitely is very nice. And then here we've got this kind of little storage area and I'm pretty sure, I mentioned this in my other Highlander review, cause you can pop that little tab out. I'm pretty sure you can pop that out so you can put your phone here, but then use the little charging stations down here. Got nice leather and stitching just down below it couple cup holders in this little area and then here is the shifter for the eight speed automatic you can see all the different gears there and then there is that dual shift mode if you're going to shift the gears yourself no paddles on the back of the steering wheel so you just have to use this with the manual shift mode and then over here you've got your little parking brake your auto hold and then we're going to go over this whole section in a moment when we go over into the drive modes here is the full center console and again it's got kind of like this nice little stitching now this is cool there's wireless charging in here and you're like, well, that runs the center console, but it opens up just like a lid so that you can reveal more storage. So functions pretty well. And then this kind of just slides over. And finally, you got some more storage up here above the glove box. And then you have the glove box itself, which pretty normal sized. And again, notice the touches with the nice leather and stitching here in the limited. So we're gonna call this like an amalgamation of a drive mode select because instead of just having like one drive mode select, it's all over the place, which is different, but it does take a while to get used to. You can see that you've got the drive modes here, then you got more drive modes here, 
But then you got another one here. So yeah, anyways, auto stop starts here. That's your held setting control, that's your stability control, and then I'll press all the drive modes, which will pop here in the little center display to show you. So you can go up into sport mode, and then you can go down into eco mode, and then you can push in for normal. You got like the mud and sand, and then you got the rock and the dirt, and it kind of shows you little graphics. And then you got the snow, which will pop up right there. So all the drive modes pop up on the screen. It's just interesting that Toyota put it into like three different button areas. So yeah. Up top here, got the little sunglass holder with the mirror so you can see what's happening in the rear of the Highlander. And then it does come with a sunroof in this particular one, which is a nice little touch, lets some more light into the cabin. Now it is a lighter colored headliner and that's all for the top. Now that we're done going over the interior, let's briefly go over pricing and in terms of pricing, this particular Highlander Limited stickers for about $47,000 before any type of market adjustment. And I mean, $40,000 sticker price sounds like a lot, but compared to the competition, it's actually a pretty good value with all the tech that this comes with. That all being said, let's take this Highlander Limited out and see how it drives. Well, let's talk about visibility before we set off here in the 2020 Highlander. And visibility over the hood is actually pretty solid. And I forgot to mention the dash up here is actually pretty nice. You see visibility through the side mirror there and then through the other mirror. And then all throughout the rear, it's a bunch of very large windows. And then I am going to make a change for this driving portion. I'm going to try to make it a little bit more concise. I want you guys to let me know in the comment section below if you liked how I did it prior or if you like today's driving portion where I try to make things a little bit more concise. We are initially taking off here in the Highlander and let's go over the road noise and ride quality. So first off with the road noise, it's pretty minimal. You do hear a little bit of tire noise, but other than that, the noise is pretty well mitigated in the Highlander. Wind noise is non-existent. And then over to the ride quality, it's very smooth. This is on par with everything in its category. I would definitely put this above average in terms of smoothness from a ride quality standpoint. So if ride quality is important to you, then the Highlander is definitely a solid option to go for. Taking a turn up here, steering is extremely light. In terms of directness on the steering itself, there's a little bit of vagueness, but it's really direct for an SUV of this size. And that's all for the steering. It's comfortable and it's direct. We are gonna see what this 3.5 liter V6 is made of. Geared down relatively quickly. In terms of the acceleration itself, it, it's decent for the size of SUV that this is. It's not quick by any means. It's not gonna shove you back in your seat or anything like that. But the power is adequate and the power delivery itself is relatively smooth. That 3.5 liter V6 is pretty linear. It'd be awesome if they added a V8 to this. However, the V6 is more than adequate for the Highlander. Let's sum things up for our video here on this 2020 Highlander Limited. If you're looking for a very comfortable third row SUV that has a ton of safety tech in it, and the interior on this is actually really nice. I mean, you guys have seen it as I reviewed it. So nice interior, good safety tech, good ride quality. Toyota is known for their reliability. This 3.5 liter V6 is extremely reliable. The transmission shifts well enough. So overall, this is a very solid package. There's nothing like crazy special about it, but it's just good at everything that it makes it a very good value. So if you're in the market for a third row SUV, check out this 2020 Highlander. That is gonna sum things up for our video on the 2020 Toyota Highlander Limited. And again, as always, a huge shout out and thank you to the Larry H. Miller Toyota here in Murray, Utah for providing us with the Highlander. Check out their inventory in the link below where obviously you can pick up this Highlander and they've got a bunch more. So. That all being said, I'll see all of you in the next video.